Is Israel really trying to avoid civilian casualties in Gaza, or is it instead turning Gaza into a mass assassination factory? So this recent investigation by Plus972 magazine's Yuval Abraham looks inside Israel's calculated bombing of Gaza, revealing Israel's permissive airstrikes on non-military targets in Gaza, and the use of an AI system that has enabled the Israeli army to carry out its deadliest war on Gaza ever. So let me read you a quote from this investigation. Nothing happens by accident. When a three-year-old girl is killed in a home in Gaza, it's because someone in the army decided it wasn't a big deal for her to be killed, that it was a price worth paying in order to hit another target. Everything is intentional. We know exactly how much collateral damage there is in every move." Unquote. So what exactly is Israel's system when it comes to identifying what to target in Gaza? And why has it led to such a high civilian death toll? So Israel in this war on Gaza has used this AI system called Habzorah, which means the gospel in Hebrew, that can generate or identify targets at a much faster rate than ever before. But this system, when combined with loosened restrictions on bombing identified targets, has allowed for far more collateral damage, meaning Israel is willing to cause excessive destruction and killing with disproportionate weapons, even when there's one specific target. Facilitating what one former intelligence officer called a mass assassination factory, in which the emphasis is on quantity and not on quality. And Israel's targets division, which oversees all of this, are also reportedly not being judged by the quality, but the quantity of targets that they generate or identify. Another source reported that the criteria around harming Palestinian civilians has been significantly relaxed. As such, there are cases in which they shell based on a wide cellular pinpointing of where the target is, and as a result, kill civilians. This is often reportedly done to save time, instead of doing a little more work to get a more accurate pinpointing. Since Israel estimates that there are roughly 30,000 Hamas members in Gaza, and they are all marked for death, the number of potential targets is enormous. Officials also reported that the homes of lower-ranked members of Hamas or other Palestinian factions were also purposefully targeted, even if it meant killing everybody inside the building. There are reportedly four categories of targets, one of which is called a power target, as sources said the army defines them. These are high-rises or residential towers, which there are quite a lot of in Gaza because it's a densely populated small area. Now, the bombing of these power targets, according to intelligence sources, is often primarily intended to harm Palestinian civil society or to create a shock. In each of them, Israel claims there is a military target which for Israel justifies bombing the whole building. So this pressure on Palestinian civil society, it's intended, will then translate into civilian pressure on Hamas. In previous operations on Gaza, it was possible to attack these power targets if all the civilians inside had been evacuated. But the Israeli army have abandoned or loosened these prior policies, which aimed at avoiding harm to civilians. Since October the 7th, Israel has attacked high-rises with their residents still inside. Often, these attacks have resulted in the killing of entire families. And now the Israeli army has carried out attacks on private residents even when there is no known or identified military target. Yuval Abraham reported that according to five Israeli intelligence sources, the amount of civilians that are likely to be killed before every strike is written down. And to end with one more quote, there is a feeling that senior officials in the army are aware of their failure on October the 7th and are busy with the question of how to provide the Israeli public with an image of victory that will salvage their reputations.